Hello everyone. Today's Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verses from 13 to 20, is a continuation of last Sunday's Gospel. It leads us to the time when Jesus had taken his disciples to the base of Mount Hermon at Caesarea Philippi. It was a place for ancient pagan gods and also the main source of the river Jordan. It was the setting for a very important conversation that took place between Jesus and his disciples. Up until this time, Jesus had been performing several roles as prophet, reformer, healer, preacher and rabbi or teacher of the law. Besides, Jesus often referred to himself as the Son of Man. So Jesus questioned the disciples about what they and others thought of him. They answered that people believed he was a reincarnation of one of the ancient prophets, either Elijah or Jeremiah, or the last prophet John the Baptist, whom Jesus considered to be the greatest of all of the prophets who had come before him. But Simon confessed that Jesus was the Messiah or the Christ, the Son of the living God. Friends, Simon's confession showed that perhaps having known Jesus personally, he and the other disciples were starting to believe Jesus to be more than a man or a prophet. And Jesus, clearly pleased with Simon's understanding and faith, changed his name to Peter and further declared that he would be instrumental in establishing his church. And at the same time, Jesus reminded him that the understanding behind it did not come from himself but by revelation from God the Father. However, from today's Gospel narrative, we realize that Peter seemed so near and yet was so far from understanding the nature of Jesus' Messiahship. Because after instructing his disciples not to speak of him as the Messiah, Jesus continued to reveal more about what lay ahead of him. Specifically, he predicted his own rejection by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes and be killed. But Peter could not imagine the Messiah dying at the hands of his enemies. Like other Jews of the day, Peter was holding fast to God's promise of the one who would come with the divine powers to deliver Israel from its enemies and establish a prosperous earthly kingdom. So he took Jesus aside to tell him not to speak of such things and that God would not permit any harm to happen to him. But the reality is that it was not God who was forbidding, it was Peter who was forbidding Jesus to do God's mission. It was almost like a disciple, Peter, telling his master Jesus to follow him in his way of thinking. So Jesus used the strongest language possible to rebuke Peter. He said, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Friends, here Peter acted as a tempter, a deceiver, or an enemy of God's purpose. He tried to tempt Jesus to deviate from his divinely ordained mission of attaining glory through the way of the cross. Friends, Jesus called Peter Satan, and he did not stop there. He further made it clear that those who, like Peter, confess that he is the Messiah and wish to be his disciples should be willing to do so under three conditions. 1. Self-denial Friends, self-denial is not self-rejection, but the sustained or constant willingness to say no to self and yes to God. It means renouncing self-interest, disregarding the gratification of one's own needs and desires, relinquishing one's own will to do the will of God, and following the example of Jesus, serve the needs of others with humility rather than wanting to please only themselves. 2. Taking up the cross. To take up one's cross means to willingly give one's life without reservation to Jesus Christ. It involves accepting everything unpleasant, painful, sad, difficult and oppressive that may happen to us in life without complaint. 3. Following Jesus. Following Jesus means to be in submission to his will. It also means a willingness to walk in his footsteps or live as he lived, imitate his example in deeds of compassion for the needy, forgive one's offenders without limit and conditions, 
overcome evil with good and so on. Friends, after teaching his disciples about the need for them to pick up their cross daily in order to follow him, Jesus drew their attention to the great option before them. He said, For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. Friends, this choice leads a person seeking to preserve his temporal life at the expense of his conscience by forsaking Christ and the gospel to lose his eternal life, while another seeking to forego all the pleasures, comforts and conveniences for the sake of Christ and the gospel to enjoy an immortal and eternal life. Then Jesus posed two great questions to them. He asked, What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit one's life? Or what can one give in exchange for one's life? Friends, to gain the whole world is to receive all that the world has to offer. Money, fame, pleasure, power, prestige, etc. To forfeit or to lose one's life is to die without the right relationship with Christ and to spend an eternity in the fires of hell. Through this statement, Jesus was saying that no cost was too high to gain eternal life for one's soul. Or, to put another way, there is nothing more valuable than one's life or soul. Friends, having said that, Jesus then foretold that in the end, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, will come with all his angels and reward each person according to his deeds. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. While we do pray to God not to lead us into temptation, we should be just as careful not to walk into temptation. Because there is a tempting tendency in all of us to escape bearing our personal crosses, but also to encourage those who are dear to us not to carry them, just as Peter tried to persuade Jesus away from the road to Golgotha. Sometimes even well-meaning friends or companions might try drawing us away from the path of sacrifice and self-denial taught by Christ and towards the worldly path of working purely for self-interest and self-glory. 2. If we would be his disciples, Jesus demands our exclusive commitment to him. His teaching about losing and finding life challenges to make a choice between living life exclusively for oneself, for one's own gains and pleasures, and renouncing one's own security and comfort for the good of others. 3. We need to pray always that we may become Jesus' faithful disciples by embracing our daily crosses, have courage and determination to say no to ourselves and say yes to our path of sacrifice, and follow Jesus every day by denying ourselves and walking in his footsteps along the way of the cross. Amen. God bless you.